All right, guys. Uh, yeah, I know. First things first. I know that my hair is fucking well stupid today. Um, it's gone like a little bit a razor head. Um, speaking of which, do you know who's got really good hair? <clears throat> and it's not a secret. David Lynch. David Lynch's hair is fucking supreme. Anyway, that was quite an intro. So we're going back over to Northern Monk to another entry in the Patrons Project. And this is a new series that they're doing. Um, this, For once, I'd actually like to stay with uh, one Patrons pro Project series. Because I think if you, if you actually get all of the beers from one series and show another monk you get something um like a gift or something like that so um yeah i'll try my best but hey ho there are so many beers and so little money so uh yeah that probably won't happen but yeah this is um patrons project 21.01 brewed in collaboration with skgn and this is dream like or dream line forms number one double dry up pale ale ipa I should say don't know what's going on here 7.4 percent brewed of enigma tapaz citra bbc oi oi and columbus so let's have a quick look at this then uh, so here is the artwork really nice and simple nice contemporary so, SKGN is Sam Nicklin, and he works with many different people, but creating visuals is his passion. These two roles cross paths on a daily basis, making his job quite interesting. His style is broad at times, but has an emphasis on opposites and contrasts. He believes life has its high highs and its low lows, and embodies this motto into his work. We get nice examples of his work as well. Camera's not doing it any justice, of course. Would you expect it to? No. So, uh, from the brewer, brewed in the north with Brian Dickinson. Dixon. <sighs> Can't speak. Brethren, hashtag 002. The first in our series of IPAs with artist SKGN coinciding nicely with the rival into the UK of the 2019 Harvest Top Varieties from Australia. Although it's the US varieties that get most attention amongst, uh, get most attention and widest usage, I was making up a sentence there. Australian varieties have some truly unique qualities and can pack equally a fruity punch. We chose to focus on two varieties, Enigma and Tapaz. Enigma became a big favourite in the brew house last year and we're looking forward to trying it out more throughout the autumn. It has a pretty unique profile, bringing to mind melon. Pinot Grigio, and an ever-popular juicy tropical fruit character back it up. It pairs excellently with the resinous qualities of Tapaz, which shines in IPA, IPAs with no notes of... Oh my God, I'm so fucking illiterate, it would seem, uh, with notes of orange and lychee. As a base for these flavours, we've put together a grist of malted and flaked oats and filled out further with maltodextrin. We also threw in some citra for bonus tropical fruit and Columbus for a balancing touch of pepper and pine. So uh, yeah, interesting stuff. So not brewed in collaboration with another brewery, uh, it's just with another artist. So I'm not sure if the rest of the beers uh, will be with SKGN or maybe focusing on different artists. That's the, the wonderful thing about the uh, Patrons Project. It's just, uh, God, my hair is very annoying to look at right now. There we go. That'll do. It looks even... Look at that at the side. Do you know what? Let's just brush it to the side. And there we go. Not any better, but hey-ho. So, without any further ado, let's get this opened and see what we get. Uh, pick this up from the uh, refectory in Manchester. Uh, because I've picked up the latest Drew Millwood collaboration. I uh, picked up the the limited edition where you get the cereal box, the t-shirt and the beer and destroyed the box trying to open it. So uh, yeah, lovely stuff. Anyway, beer in the glass then and uh, the light is caught it beautifully. It's illuminated it really nicely. Uh, I'm seeing it a lot more turbid and um, 
toned down, but it's still dense looking beer. Gets a little bit clearer and a little bit thinner towards the bottom. But around this part, um, what I'm seeing, which can we get a good sort of... That is actually a really good representation of what the colour is when there's no light actually bleeding through. But just look at that. Special effects. Special effects. Special effects. Special effects. Special effects. It's not changed anymore. There it is. Special effects. Special effects. But um, yeah, it's got that sort of um, marmalade peach compote look to it. Beer poured with just shy three fingers worth of a slightly off-white head. So let's see what we get on the nose. Not getting too much on the nose, not going to lie. Not even dunking your nose into the, the froth is going to do anything. It's a little bit more potent on the can because I'm guessing that head is blocking a lot of those aromas. So, Enigma to Paz, Citra and Columbus. It's definitely got a spiciness to it. There's a pepperiness. Yeah, I'm not really getting too much from the glass itself. Yeah, it's got a dank, resiny edge to it. Sticky, sweet. For some reason I'm reminded of Green Starburst. Very specific, I know, but yeah, it's got that sort of like Mao Am Haribo sort of character. Rancheries through pastels. It's got a classic American sort of IPA flavour with some subtle tropical hues. Grapefruit pith, a little bit of blood orange nectar in. Yeah, it's it's smelling really nice. It's not the the most potent of uh, IPAs ever, but um, it's smelling interesting. So let's give it a taste. Cheers. Ooh. The more I drink IPAs like this, the more I fall in love with them. I know people love it when they're like, you know slapped across their face by dominatrix when it comes to you know the the hop attack and that sort of thing they want it big punchy juicy in your face abrasive going into really sweet territory or resiny territory see i like my hazy ipas to be like the soft pillowy but still flavorsome and this is one of those. Uh, the body on this is lovely. Silky smooth, but there's gentle carbonation there. Distributing it nicely around the palate. Big melon character coming through. Big melons. So childish. So inappropriate, but... Yeah, watermelon. Peach, apricots, a little bit of mango chutney. Flavour that I've not had for a while in IPA, lychee. Given that like classic American um, IPA character, let's take a sip from the can. just always seems so much more satisfying drinking directly from the can. I don't know what it is. I think the alchemists are onto something uh, with just drinking it directly from the can. I think because the spout is smaller, it condenses the body almost. But yeah, this is jammy, sticky, peach compote, that sort of stuff. Seven point four percent. No way. Just drink this by the <laughs> palate load. There are hops there that, even though I've read the description, <clears throat> and I'm getting those familiar characteristics that you expect, <clears throat> with them being some hops that I'm not really too used to. Getting those sort of like 
subtle nuances which you're not really used to. But then again, I'm one of those people who still, the only real hop that I can like detect like a, a pro, fucking, I'm never a pro. I'm probably one of the least well-equipped um, reviewers on YouTube. My palette is just never take anything I say um, as gospel. Um, I think I've got, I think it's just me with learning. Um, I'm really good at like absorbing it and memorizing, but not actually let it sink in. Um, it was like, you know, when I, when I was learning German, it was just, I was, I think I was like just getting to a point where it was like appeasing for that lesson that I was, you know, because when I was learning it in Germany and just like letting people hear as if I'm progressing and just appeasing them. And I think that's what my palette's like. Um, I've noticed I've used, I use the same flavours all the time, the same descriptors. And I think, like, Citra is probably the hop that I'll... Sorry about that. Um, yeah, Citra is one of those... <laughs> Citra is one of those hops that... Um, I've become really familiar with and you get that in this but it works well with the other sort of flavors there there's a spiciness to it almost like um like some sort of bell pepper or chili pepper and I think that's coming from the Columbus but yeah a little bit of pine it's one of those IPAs that is, it morphs between, like, a classic, like, American, resiny, west, west, west coast IPA, but doesn't get to the point where it's overtly bitter or a palate wrecker, but it's still sticky, sweet, and dense, but then it's got a vibrancy of the, you know, the turbid, hazy, New England, Vermont style. Um, so you're getting characteristics of both but then it's like this peppery heat on the back end which is really nice it's just a lovely lovely beer and I think it's one of those it's one of those weird beers that will probably go under the radar um, with releases because I didn't even know that this new strain of the Patriots Project um, had been released. And I just saw the can in the fridge at Northern Monk. And I was like, I just, the sort of minimalistic look to it uh, sort of like <coughs> drew me to it. And I needed to buy a few beers to justify getting some stuff. But um, yeah, what a lovely surprise this is. Um, I've had a really good run in the past few weeks of Northern Monk beers. And once again, cementing them to be my favourite UK brewery. Even though I'm drinking out of cloud water glass, wearing a cloud water sweater. But um, I've had really good cloud water beers recently as well. I've just been having really good beers. Um, although I had some... Eh, I had... Um, like a chocolate and pecan stout from the Garden Brewery, who just make consistently okay beers. Not to shit on another brewery while reviewing a different brewery's beer. Um, and then I had like a couple of beers from the Beer 52 box recently while I was watching The Apprentice. And they, they were okay, but you drink something like this, it's like, whoop, you're revitalised. And even though I've been drinking a lot of these hazy beers... It's still tasting really fresh. Oh, but that's lovely stuff. It really, really is. They've done a damn good job on this one. Uh, so, yeah, that was uh, Dream Line Forms 1. I think that's what this strain of... Um, stop saying strain, Peter. That's so fucking stupid. Um, I think this is the... Is that the name of this series in the Patrons Project? Um... Yeah, lovely, lovely stuff. 
Uh, in terms of rating, um, I could give that. Excuse me. Clogged up in the nose for a second there. I could easily give that uh, an eight and a half out of ten. That's lovely, lovely stuff. And um, yeah, highly recommended if you see it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what other beers um, are part of this series. Anyway, so if you've tried it, then let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Um, if you're a fan of these beers, if you're a fan of the Oliver Monk, hit me up. Let me know your thoughts, opinions. Check out the brewery. Check out my Patrons Project uh, playlist. Probably one of the most consistent series of beers that I've had. Of course, there's been the odd couple of beers, as you would expect. A brewery's not going to consistently brew 8, 9, 10 out of 10 beers. It's just not possible. You know, even Cloudwater have periods where beers are just okay. You know, Northern Monk have done that as well. Um, some uninspired entries into the Patrons Project. Um, some core beers that I'm just not a fan of. Um, of course, aside from Heaven, which is just like God's gift from God's country. Um, so, you know, I think breweries are aware of that as well. They know when a beer's not being too good. Um, but luckily, Northern Monk just, you know... They've not been to the point where they're like a phoenix rising from the ashes. It's never been that point. I don't think Northern will ever get to that point. Because they just they know how to release bangers. And they they've got a you know, a year round release now of a lager, dry hop to a citra, which is great. So I look forward to trying that. Because I do love a lager. They do good lagers. Minus that rattler they did. A little while back. Um but yeah, as long as, as double dry hopped IPAs go, they know what they're doing. And um, yeah, I'm yet to have like a boring IPA um, from the Patrons Project. Uh, but because like I said, some of their core stuff, I'm just not a fan of. It just doesn't do anything for me. A lot of the stuff, a lot of core ranges and a lot of like highly regarded IPAs, right? Remind me of like what it was like to drink okay beer, you know, in the mid 2000s. Although that's a fucking bullshit statement because I wasn't really drinking craft in the mid 2000s. <clears throat> it's only been the past like five, six years, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, no, actually. If I gauge it right, probably just before like 2010 is when I started getting into this sort of stuff when I was at uni. That's when I start. Yeah, so, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to stand by what I said. And uh, I think someone farts outside and you might have heard it. Anyway. Yeah, just some core range beers I'm drinking. It's like, just scrap them and evolve. Anyway, so yeah, this is damn good beer. Give it a try if you can get the opportunity. And uh, yeah, check out Northern Monk. Check out my Patreon project playlist. And hopefully next time I won't look like I've just... I don't know. I don't know what this hairstyle says about me, to be honest. But hey, you know, when you look like me, you've got to work with what you've got. And I've obviously done a bad job today, so I've let you all down. But hey, at least I don't have a greasy fringe this time. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't click and point, and I'll see you later.